Hi, y'all. It just doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth. I can't come up with anything, uh, any kind of catchphrase witty like my beautiful wife here. It's been a little weird. So I wasn't sure what to talk about today, but I um, thought I'd talk a little bit about my work history and what I've gone through looking for looking for a job here. I've got uh, 38 years in, in, or excuse me, 36 years in storefront retail. I have three and a half years in uh, in car sales, and of those of uh, those 36 years, uh, 22 of them were in management. So one of the problems that I have is not being bossy, and uh, it's kind of funny because years ago Teresa and I look at me like that. <laughs> Teresa and I used to work um, for our landlord. And we would do stuff. Uh, we'd paint and patch and fix and all of that, all of that other stuff. She's so distracting. All of that other stuff. And it was kind of funny because when we got into some areas of her expertise, she'd kind of take over. And when we got in areas of my expertise, I'd kind of take over. So we worked. We worked well together. Um, I don't want to be a boss anymore, but unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to end up doing that if I want to make more than minimum wage. I've had, I talked to a district manager of a company uh, about a week ago, and uh, he said, well, this this store has an opening for an assistant manager, and this store might have an opening for an assistant manager. And uh, um, so I went to talk to the first store. And the guy said, nope, don't have an opening. I might be able to put you on part-time. You know, and driving 30 miles round trip for a part-time job just doesn't seem very cost-effective to me. So I went and talked to the local store. And unfortunately, the manager was out on vacation. I know his mom's uh, been having health problems. He's been really taking care of her a lot. And I have a feeling that's part of it. And... Uh, then I was told, well, they don't have any any manager or any uh, any assistant manager jobs, and they don't have any part time jobs. But then I keep getting all these um, alerts on my emails from all the job services that I've subscribed to, and uh, you know, they, I'm still getting posts from these companies that, oh, we're looking for assistant managers, we're looking for help. Um, and like I said, I do have a problem not being bossy. Why are you eating an onion? Hey, goofball. Sorry, honey. <laughs> Why are you eating... Who is no. that? CJ, the beagle, is eating an onion. Well, that's because it's she's... just not right in the head. She's not right because it's three feet to go over to that dish of food she's got there. and. Yeah, I'd rather eat an onion. Mm-hmm. Mm. But, uh... Um, Sorry. One of the company that I, I one of the companies that I worked from worked for and retired from, um, they would send me they sent me a, a couple times to set up liquor other liquor stores in the state, and they sent me to this one, and they they put me in charge of getting getting the store set and all of that, and we I was gone figured it out. From the time we, I left my front door to the time I got back, I was gone for 53 hours. And in those 53 hours, I worked 33 of them. So it was just a lot of kamikaze, run your ass off, that type of stuff. And uh, everybody was everybody was working great. They were all uh, they were all listening to me. I didn't have to, you know, I didn't have to yell or scream. And I, it's just not You're in not my nature. You're not really a yeller or screamer, though. Yeah, but. Uh, when it your was. Voice is big enough. <laughs> it was getting toward the end of the third day, and uh, um, all of us were just exhausted. I mean, we had done a ton of work. We had ran our tail off, and we were to the point where we had all the shelves set. We were just stocking the merchandise onto the shelves, filling up the shelves, and uh, all these people they were stocking. And then what they were doing is just throwing the boxes in the aisle. They weren't, they, you know, we had baskets to put the cardboard in and everything. And, you know, it doesn't take that long to break down a basket or break down a cart, break down a box and throw it in the cart. But, I mean, it was just, it was like almost chest deep in cardboard. And uh, I was worried somebody was going to fall or, or something like that. And everybody was just screwing around. And I did lose my temper. 
And so I walked up behind one guy. He had no clue I was there. And Teresa might argue with this, but I, I do admit I do have a large mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I use my outside voice, I am sure they can hear me up in Georgia. Yeah. And uh, I walked up behind this guy, and in my biggest voice, I yelled. I yelled at him, and I apologize for the profanity, but this is what I said. I yelled at him, quit fucking around and get this garbage cleaned up now. And when before I finished the word quit, this guy came off the floor about three feet. And I swear he was breaking down boxes before he even hit the ground. And then so I went over the next aisle to yell at them. Just as I'm rounding the corner, I realized this guy I walked up behind was my district manager. <laughs> and uh, um, it was amazing how fast they got all this stuff cleaned up. And uh, um, um, I, as, as I was walking over, I just went over and, and kept my cool and yelled at those guys, too, about getting this mess cleaned up and, and everything. And when we were finished, the store looked absolutely incredible. And... Uh, um, the district manager took us all out for a, a thank you dinner that night, you know, in his appreciation of all the hard work he did. And he, he looked at me and I thought, okay, this is where I get fired. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, you know what? Nobody has made me jump that high since I was a carry out over 30 years ago. And, uh, he, he started laughing. He thought it was great. And, uh, until he left the district, he still gave me grief about making him jump so high. But, you know, it's just, unfortunately, it's just in my nature. And, uh, but anyway, um, one of the problems I'm having is, as a lot of people are telling me, a lot of the employers are telling me that, well, you know, we don't want to pay you minimum wage or we can't afford you to pay you any more than minimum wage. So we don't want to waste your time and hire you. And, you know, it's, it's with, with my retirement pension coming in each month. It's not like we need a whole lot of extra each month, but you know we want to we want to get out of the RV. We want to sell this. Well, I mean, pub. we don't have enough to, to really no. make it though. I mean, no. we have just barely enough to cover everything and our food, but you know. Yeah. And and every month things do arise that yeah. you need to replace, yeah. fix, Last retag month. vehicles, health care. That's a big thing. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you know, but I'm I'm willing to do that. You know, I figure, unlike a lot of people I've talked to, that there's nothing beneath me. You know, I mean, I will do whatever it takes to support to support my wife and and our little our little critters around our here, zoo? our zoo, our menagerie. Mm -hmm. You know, so so that gets kind of frustrating. And then another thing I'm frustrated with the current job market is. Uh, when I was a uh, manager, you know, I was manager in the liquor department and then I was a manager for a, at a C store. And I hate the online, um, online job applications mm -hmm. because um, I, I think my people skills are good enough on reading people where when somebody brings me in a paper app that they had to sit down and fill out that it's, you know, I, for the most part, I've been a really, really good judge of if they're going to work out for me well, or not. Well, another thing, too, is you get to see what their what their penmanship is right, mm -hmm. like. Usually, sometimes you can tell what education level they might have mm -hmm. achieved. I mean, I'm not talking, you know, but that at least they went through high school. Because yeah. if you can't spell just common little words, uh -huh. that kind of, you know. Yeah. You know, but I mean. Yeah. I had one lady at uh, this the first C store I was running. She worked at a, at this um, fast food place right next right next door, and she came in and she was just being really pissy. And uh, you know, I asked her what was the matter, and she said, "Well, she'd been there for seven years, and they kept cutting her hours, and they weren't treating her very well." And I said, "Well." you know, start looking for another job. And she said, well, that's why I came over here to get a job app. And she said the, the thing that really made her mad was now she's going to have to quit smoking pot for a couple months until that gets out of her system <sighs> as she's asking me for a job app. So, like, okay. yeah, you know, so it's, it's little slips like that. And if you just pay attention to, to people, 
you can you can learn a lot by learn a lot by body language. And like I say, we don't have a big beef about about people smoking pot no. if it's legal in your state. You know, or whatever you want to do in your personal life, but, you know, whatever the state law is, yeah. I mean, you know. And that particular company, that was one of the things that they, right. when they drug tested, that's one of the things they tested for. Right. And, uh, um, and she knew that, that, you know, she'd been in that place long enough and was able to, to smoke her little heart out. And, uh, um, you know, and like Teresa said, I don't have a problem with it, but it is illegal. And, uh, you know, if it is ever legalized here i will probably try it i've never tried it in my life but uh you know i just i don't like the the uh, i don't like the online job apps you know as uh as somebody filling them out or as somebody that used to get them um one of the places i worked for we had uh uh, uh hr lady i don't remember what her official title was but she would do the hiring for us and, uh, you know, so basically you got dumped on whatever you could get. And, uh, um, you know, like I said, there's a lot of people that, that she dumped on me that I could tell the first day that they, they weren't going to make it. They weren't going to be a good fit, you know. Well, and, what do you uh, think about these companies now running credit checks? You know. If you can be hired or not. I just don't understand yeah. that concept. Yeah. And I, you know, and I can understand a background tra- yeah. check. But, you know, I don't see where a credit check will affect your um, your ability to do the job. Right. You know, I mean, because things that will show up in a background check, you know, if you've been, you know, if you've been busted for stealing or anything like that. Right. You know, and it's also gotten to a point where a lot of the employers, um, when you call them for a reference, they will not. They will not give references because they're afraid of lawsuits. Right, right. You know, it's like the company, the company I retired from. If you, uh, if I was another employer calling about a reference, they would give me a one eight hundred number to call, which was the home office, and the home office would say, "Yes, this person worked from, you know, from this date to this date," and that's all they're going to give them. They won't give them anything in the way of, in the way of. The, the job quality or well, or anything like that. Yeah. So it's just you know this this country has become so lawsuit happy and and uh, um, you know the the lawyers and I'm not bashing bashing all lawyers. My cousin is a lawyer and I really right. really admire him for the job he does. And uh, um, you know, but there's there's some of these there's some of these bottom feeding lawyers that that's how they make their living is, Mm -hmm. is going after the class action lawsuits, you know? So, so, um, I think, yeah, I think, I mean, it took you about three weeks to get a job. Yeah. Um, and we didn't work real hard on it for about a week and a half on the thing. I mean, this is ironically the, the, um, location that Brad wanted and yeah. the part time that he wanted mm-hmm. to start out with. Um, uh, I just don't want people to get discriminated. I know as we age, it's harder, mm-hmm. and when you have all the job history, it's harder because mm-hmm. people do think, "Oh, you're not going to want to do yeah. this job." But you know, there's something to be said about us older workers, and yeah, we're only in our fifties. Um, but you know. As more seasoned employee, employees that, um, you know, we already have a pension coming in, so we're not looking at setting the world on fire. Mm-hmm. We're not looking necessarily for that, that long mm-hmm. career. We're looking for a supplemental income. Yeah. Just like, you know, what I do with my craft business. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I was looking for a, 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 a real hardcore career with insurance and everything, I would not, not be doing this. Yeah. This is oh, a yeah. supplemental income and it's something I love and yeah. you know, it will be nice for you to get to, to know some of the locals better. Yeah. This area of Florida has been hit extremely hard by hard economic times. It used to be a fishing community and when they um, made uh, harsher uh, commercial fishing uh, regulations, I'm going to snack in a minute, um, they, uh, it really devastated this area economy you'll see a lot of businesses closed down a lot of hotels restaurants a lot of foreclosures in this area mm-hmm. a lot of stuff boarded up 
part of the reason we picked this area so we could reestablish and because there are so many homes that availability of homes we should be able to pick one up cheaper when mm -hmm. the time is right yep exactly so exactly and i was going to say something but i forgot so it obviously wasn't that important but i'm really really grateful for your input you're going to hit me aren't you no not till that fell off <laughs> no witnesses okay uh, that's enough <laughs> This you. is why you're unfriended. I know. I know. I love you. Love so, you. if you have any questions, I'm any, proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be back in the ranks of, un, of unemployed, of being employed. I think you know? kind of looking forward. You've been kind of a little bored because, you know, I mean, sitting watching me loom is not the most fascinating thing in the world. Mm hmm. And, and taking the dachshund to go out potty every 33 minutes. <laughs> yeah. You know, and now the giant schnauzer thinks that, well, if the dachshund can do it, then I can do it too. And about half the time you take them out, they just want to bark at the neighbors or mm -hmm. whatever. So, anything else, sweetie? Nope. Okay. So, any questions, please ask. Any comments, good or bad, let me have it. And uh, quit yawning. And ah, <laughs> now you got a videotape. Yeah, look how beautiful you look. Ow, <laughs> ah. <laughs> holy moly, crap! Holy, that's enough. The dogs are on okay. my side. Okay, so we will, Carly, yeah. we'll talk to you next week. And if you have anything that Say you might want to know about. Or uh, oh, anything oh, like that, just oh. put them in the comments. <laughs> and we will talk at you later. Say bye, Teresa. Bye, Teresa. Okay, now I have my glasses on. So. And the button's right.